Good day students, welcome to math.surf.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over section 7.1 of our virtual geometry text on right triangles. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Pythagorean theorem. The type of problem that we're going to be solving in this presentation is captured in this example here where you have a right triangle with legs 6 and 9. And you have to find the length of the hypotenuse x. Don't forget we have six, I mean, three practice problems at the end of this presentation for you to try out in order to, for you to demonstrate mastery of the contents of this tutorial. To gain access to our entire Algebra 1, 2, Geometry, Pre-Calc, and Cal courses, take a look at the links in the description below or visit our website at mathgutserved.com. All right, to get us started, let's go ahead and write down what the Pythagorean theorem is, the formula, and then um, that will guide our problem solving process, okay? So let's take a look at the Pythagorean theorem. So there are initial conditions that are required in order for you to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem for any type of triangle. You can only use it for one particular type of triangle, okay? What kind of triangle? Note this, given a right triangle, okay? So you can only use the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. So given the right triangle, so here we have, this is a right triangle because right here is a 90 degree angle. And a, a triangle that has a 90 degree angle is known as a right triangle, okay? So given the right triangle with legs, with legs, a and B. Now one thing you want to note here um, is that the legs are interchangeable. When you're la labeling your A and B, just note that um, the A and B labels can be interchanged, okay? But the third side, so given the right triangle with legs A and B, which are interchangeable, and the third side is known as the hypotenuse, the longest side, and hypotenuse C, okay, we have, there's a special relationship between them, which is A square plus B square equals C square, okay? So the sum of the square of the legs, so these two measures, the two shorter legs, shorter sides are known as the legs, the sum of the square square of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, okay? Hypotenuse. All right, let's visualize that on our um, right triangle right here. So let's say this is A and this is B and this is C. How do we know that this is C? Well, it's opposite the 90 degree angle, okay? So that makes it the hypotenuse right there. So this is your hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse or C square is equal to the square of B, this is one leg, and the square of A, that's the second leg. All right, so that goes your Pythagorean theorem right there. So let's go ahead and apply this in finding the missing side of a right triangle given two sides. All right, so let's get started. So the task here is to find X for these three, three triangles, okay? So find the value of x. So for number one, let's say we have the right triangle that was presented at the onset. So this is your 90 degrees angle. This is nine and this is six, okay? And this side right here is x. So before we start, let's go over the steps that uh, we're going to use to um, apply the Pythagorean theorem in finding the missing sides of right triangles, okay? So the steps are as follows. Go ahead and write this down. Uh, number one, what you do first is you label. Label, label the um, A, B, and C, okay? Label... A, B, the legs, the shorter sides, and C, the longest side, okay, known as the hypotenuse. You label first, and then you make a list. You list your knowns, 
Okay, you're going to be given two sides, which are your knowns, and you have to find the third side, which is your unknown. All right, so list your known and unknown, your knowns and unknown. And then next, you write down the formula that relates these three sides. Write the formula, the Pythagorean formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then lastly, you substitute your known and unknowns into the formula and solve. Okay, don't forget to simplify where applicable. So those are, these are the steps we're gonna apply to these three problems, okay? All right, so first for number one, um, we're gonna go ahead and label it. All right, so let's title this the solution. So you can see the original problem and the solution, okay? So A and B, we'll label A and B first. So this is A and this is B. Why? Well, any of the two legs, one of them is A and one is B. It doesn't really matter what you call A or B. As long as you're calling the shorter sides A and B, that's perfectly fine. But opposite the 90 degree angle, the longest side of a triangle is always C. Okay, this is known as your hypotenuse and the other two are the legs. All right, so we're done with step one. We've labeled A, B, and C. Now let's list what we know and what is unknown. So our knowns are A, we know A, A is nine. We also know that B is six. X, uh, C, sorry, is an unknown. So C is unknown. We don't know what that is, so we represent it with a variable X since it's unknown. All right, our task now is to solve for C. Find C, I'm sorry, X or C as indicated in the original statements. All right, so. Next step, after listing knowns and unknowns, these are two knowns, this is our unknown right here. We're going to write down the formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem. Substitute, nine squared plus six squared equals x squared. How did that happen? Well, we substituted the value of a, b, and c into the Pythagorean theorem in order to get this equation. Now let's solve it for x. Okay, so let's uh, simplify nine square and six square. Nine square is 81 plus six square is 36, which is equal to x square, all right? And then when we add 81 and 36, we get 117. So x square, using the reflexive property of equality, we can switch it around. x square is 117. Now to get x by itself, you need to get rid of the square root. The inverse of square, we, I'm sorry, we need to get rid of the square, okay? So to get rid of the square, we use the inverse. The inverse of square is square root. So you take the square root of both sides, okay? And then you have x because when you take the square root of a square, they cancel each other out as inverse operations. That is equal to root 17, root 117. Now let's see if we can simplify this right here. Let's see if we can simplify. Attempt to simplify root 117. Okay, so we're gonna break it down into its prime factor decomposition. So what goes into 117? Two doesn't go because it's odd, right? How about three? Add the digits. 1 plus 1 plus 7 is 9. Uh, 3 goes into 9, right? So that means that um, 3 goes into the number whose sum of digits is equal to 9. So that means 3 goes into 117, definitely. How many times? Well, let's try it out. 3 goes into 11 three times, remainder 2 times seven, um, 27. Uh, 3 goes into 27 nine times. Okay, and then if you look at this number, three plus nine is 12 again. Three goes into 12, so three goes into 39. How many times does three go into 20, 39? 13 times. Now we've decomposed it completely because 13 is a prime number. We're now going to proceed to take the square root of this perfect square, okay? The square root of three times three or nine is just three. So what, uh, what does that tell us? It tells us that we can actually take out the square root of three times three or the square root of nine out of the radical and that will come out as three. 
okay? And then you're left behind with this number right here that is not a perfect square, which is 13. So any perfect square that has a factor of the radicand needs to come out as a root. So the perfect square that has a factor of 117 is 9, or 3 times 3. And when it comes out, it comes out as its root, as its root and that's just 3, okay? So the simplified form of our answer x for number 1 is 3 root 13, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one. Let's box our answer. All righty, let's take a look at number two. We're gonna apply the same procedure. We're gonna go a little bit faster with this one um, compared to question number one. All right, so let's do this. All right, so for the original problem for number two, let's say we have this uh, right triangle right here. Um, this is root 5, this is root 11, and this is x. So the task is to find x like we did previously in question number 1. Alright, so uh, this is x, root 11, and root 5. Okay, so this is a 90 degree angle. Step 1 is to lay, uh, label your triangle. So opposite the 90 degree Opposite the 90 degree angle is the longest side. This is, uh, what is this? The longest side is C. Okay, and then the other two legs are A and B. It doesn't really matter. So let's call this A and call this B. Okay, so let's list our knowns and unknowns. So our knowns are, we know what B is. Let's change the color here. Um, B is root 5 we know that we know that c is root 11 and we know that a is an unknown okay so we're going to call it x so what we're looking for in this problem is x or the value of a okay so right you first of all label write down um list the known and unknowns next you write down the formula a square plus b square equals c square and then remember the next step, step, you substitute and solve. All right, so let's substitute. We have x squared plus the square root of 5 squared. This one looks a little bit different because one both of our sides are radicals. Both of our knowns are radicals. So c squared is root 11 squared. So how do we simplify something like this? If you look at number one, we found out that the inverse of square is square root. So we are, even if you reverse the order, compose, um, the inverse relationship still applies. So square of a square root or square root of a square is the same. Uh, inversion process applies, so we, they, can, they will still cancel each other out. So here, the square root of five square, you just notice that a square root and a square cancel out. Same with the root 11 square, those two cancel out. So we are left with x squared plus 5 equals 11. Okay. Now we're going to solve this resulting equation for x as a two-step process. Subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. After subtracting 5 from both sides of the equation, you will get um, x squared is equal to 6 and then to finish this off we just proceed to take the square root of both sides of the equation okay now what's the square root of 6 so x is going to be root 6 let's see if we can simplify root 6 just as we did root 117 for number 1 all right, so what we're gonna do is break it into prime factors and see if we have any repetitions or squares in the prime factor breakdown or decomposition of six. So I'll break it down, two goes there since it's even three times. There are no prime factors that repeat in the factorization of six. So this one cannot be simplified. What does that mean? Our final answer is what we had before, which is root six. Okay, so let's go ahead and box that. 
All right, we have one more example to take a look at before we are done. And we'll give you um, some practice problems to try out, okay? So let's just take a look at this one right here. Uh, so let's say we have this right triangle, root 11, 2 root 2, and this is x right here. This is our 90 degree angle. So we want to figure out what x is. All right, let's do this. Okay, so we're going to follow the same steps that we've applied to question number one and two. We're going to apply that here also. So first things first, label your sides. The side opposite the 90 degrees, the longest side is your C. So this side right here is C. This is, uh, the two, these are the two legs. So you can call this AB or call this BA. It doesn't really matter. Let's just call this A and call this B. All right, so let's, uh, List our known and unknowns. We know that A is equal to root 11 and B is equal to 2 root 2. These are our two knowns. Our unknown C is equal to X. Next, write down the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Next step is substitute and solve. Substitute square root of 11 squared plus the square root of 2 no, 2 root 2 square. So b is 2 root 2, so we substitute that. So 2 root 2 square. And then c is unknown. We re replace that with x with x square. Okay, so there you have it. Now, um, let's go ahead and simplify. The first one is pretty straightforward. Square and square roots cancel each other out. Okay. So, goodbye, square and square root, have 11. What is 2 root 2 square? Oh, this is a little bit more complicated. We have two numbers being multiplied by each other, squared. So here, we're going to square 2, and we're going to square root 2. Okay? When we square 2, that becomes 4 times when you square root 2, the square and the square roots cancel out, so that becomes 2. Okay? So 2 root 2, let's, let me do it a different way here so you can see. When you have 2 root 2 square, okay, you're multiplying 2 root 2 twice. Two copies of 2 root 2, okay? When you multiply the um, integers 2 times 2, that's 4. When you multiply the irrational numbers, root 2 times root 2 is root 4. All right? Bring down the 4, the square root of 4 is 2, and that's what we have right here. All right? This is known as the power of a product property of exponents that you studied in Algebra 1. All right, so x squared, simplify this. You have 11 plus 8 equals x squared. All right, now we're going to proceed to isolate x. That's the goal of this problem, to find out what x is, right? So let's get x isolated. To get x isolated, it's a two-step process. Combine the left side and you root both sides of the equation. 11 plus 8 is 19 equals x squared, and then you take the square root of both sides. And then your final answer, x, is equal to the square root of 19. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your final answer for question number three. Now it's your turn to do some practice problems to demonstrate mastery of the contents of this presentation. Alrighty, so here are the three practice problems that we'd we'll like you to try out. So try these to demonstrate mastery of what we just talked about, okay? So the task is the same as before. You are to find x, find the value of x, okay? So find x in these three right triangles that are provided here. So one, say this is the right uh, angle right here, number one, number two, and for number three, this is the right angle right here, okay? So go ahead and pause the video presentation at this time. Try out these three practice problems. Once you're done, click on the playback button, and we're going to show you what the correct answers are.
All right, welcome back. Hopefully, you had a chance to try the problems. Let's take a look at what the solutions to this problem, these problems are. For the first one, x is equal to five root three. Number two, x is equal to root twenty one. And then number three, x is equal to 2 root 38. So how well did you do in these three practice problems? Let's know what your score is in the comment section below. If you have any questions concerning this or you have any special requests for a geometry tutorial, just specify it in the comment section below. And we'll be more than glad to assist you. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. If you found the contents of this tutorial, Helpful in your studies of right triangle, uh, of the right triangle, namely Pythagorean theorem, to give us a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other presentations such as this. Um, special requests for any presentation just specified in the comment section below. Tons of support resources can be found at mathgotserve.com, our website. Do check it out. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.